Hello and welcome back to my Football Manager 2023 mobile Road to Glory save with Birmingham City. As you can see, that there was a player I mentioned in the last episode that was on a free transfer. He'd been released by Manchester United, as you can see here, is none other than Phil Jones. Now, I really, really think, I know that he's not the greatest player, but if you have a look at his stats, I think here he'll really, really improve us for the championship. Um, it'll be a really, really good squad rotation player. Maybe even come in and compete with the two main centre backs that we got at the moment. Bring in a little bit of Premier League experience, which, to be honest, I think we really need. And I think, uh, yeah, I, th I think he'll uh, strengthen the team a little bit for us. We are going to sign Phil Jones. Phil Jones has joined us on a free transfer. And what a great way to start the episode is to bring in a free transfer. I think that's a great little signing from us. And now I will go and check how we have done. Okay. So as you can see, we have now completed the signing of Phil Jones. Phil joins us. Uh, as a free agent, he joins us as a squad rotation player, which I think is really important for the championship. We have given him the number 26 shirt, uh, number for us. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he can do for our squad. I'm sort of kind of happy to bring him in. I think like quite a physical defender. His position is good, his tackling is good. And to be honest, you know his experience of playing in the Premier League, I think, will be really, really important for us here. Um, in the championship so let's just have a little look at the results since you were last here with us we have drawn 1-1 with Burnley we lost 1-0 away to Blackburn we beat QPR 4-1 at home uh, a 3-0 win over Millwall and our last game before this Carabao Cup tie with West Ham was a 0-0 draw um, a little bit disappointing there but you know, it's one of those games that both teams sort of fizzled out their chances. Um, I tell you, a player who really has been forming up on form in our first team has been Jude Bellingham. Uh, Joe Bellingham, sorry. He, he's he been really, really good in that midfield. Archie Collins, again, silently going about his business, doing really, really sort of well. I think for me, Ivan Tony. He's now scored six or seven goals for us, seven or eight goals for us now, sorry, this season. I think, you know, he is going to be a real, real big signing. I think if you have a look at him, he'll be a little one that you'll say, um, you know, would come in and do really well. We've had a few injuries, so as you can see, the team's changed a little bit there. But Friend is now going to go back out the left back, um, his natural position. We will... Uh, we are going to bring, if I can find him, Phil Jones is going to come in the side, which I think, you know, Phil Jones coming into the side is, is, is really promising for the team, I think. He just adds that little bit, little Premier League experience, you know, hopefully a, a, a enough physicality to sort of help pushes up towards the top and I think that's all we need really so I've been quite happy with that uh, trusty due to is he recovered yet Sean Morrison uh, Morrison's still struggling a little bit of course we do have Mark Roberts currently out injured it's in really poor condition. We've also had George Hall get injured uh, in training. Uh, yeah, Roberts got injured in one of our games, which was really, really disappointing. Morrison is actually recovered, so he will actually come back into the side. Trusty came in. Trusty did the right job. He was trusty. Uh, no, um, jokes, bad jokes aside, he was, he was very trustworthy at the back. He kept a clean sheet. He was quite quite um in the two games he played he kept a clean sheet so he was actually a good addition to the team um and it just shows a little bit of squad depth players willing to fight for their places 
Um, so yeah, the, uh, another thing we have changed uh, is our team mentality. We've gone from being balanced to attacking. Um, that's given us a little bit more success. We started scoring more goals. Width, we're now playing with width. We're now you playing to the touchline, which again is creating us more opportunities and really sort of suiting um, the players we've got out there, which is fantastic. Planchetta um, has done fantastically for us out on the left-hand side. The tempo, we've now made it fast. You know, that's pre we like to press. We press quickly, and that again, that's creating more chances for us and creating freedom. We're being more expressive. Not being afraid to to sort of express how we're going to play, not so, not sort of afraid to to sort of take risks, which we weren't really doing before. So we're sort of now getting results by doing that. Um, also defensively, I've changed our tactics. We now play our high defensive line. Again, we've started started conceding less goals. Um, close down all over him as soon as the opposition have got the ball we close we always close them down we press really high we want to win that ball back tackling is uncautious because we started getting a few too many yellow cards um, we're now looking to hopefully try and play an offside trap which in the last three games has worked really well so I've been really really impressed with that and one of the things is we're going to be a bit more of a shit house team here. you know I, I noticed um, off camera it was something that Blackburn did really well, so we're now starting to time waste a little bit. Um, play for every minute, and that sort of, in the last three games, has all had a positive effect as well. Um, uh, in terms of our attack, we now shoot on sight again. We've started scoring more goals that way. Passing has stayed on mixed. Our passing focus, again, has stayed on mixed. Our goalkeeper distribution, again, for now, is on mixed, but that does change depending on the game. Um... So, yeah, we've been really, really, really happy with that. Change the tactics there. Set pieces. Archie Collins is our main penalty taker. Then it's Joe Bellingham. Then it's Jukovic. Jukovic has actually started turning up in the last couple of games. He's been really, really creating chances. Um, and that's been fantastic to see. Something I forgot to mention in the last episode is I made George Friend my captain. And Archie Collins my vice captain. No bias here, obviously. Uh, as a, a former ex of the player where we signed him from but no he's done really really well for us it's turned out to be a really good signing now as you can see we'll go back to the board confidence it's sort of pretty much the same as it was before really squad harmony's improved a little bit um, so yeah that's that's been really positive we're still on the sea and they're still satisfied with my managerial reign so that's sort of where we are at the moment um, for those who, are, of course, are interested, let's look. Uh, Exeter have unfortunately dropped down to 16th in League One. Shrewsbury are down in 18th. So really not good for me, for my other clubs at the moment. Plymouth, have, for you Argyle fans out there, that I know, unfortunately, you guys have moved up into 6th. Um, but again, the top three still dominated by the same three clubs as before. So really, really no change there. Uh, for those of you that asked about Wrexham in the last episode, of course, owned by Rob McElhenney and Ryan Reynolds, um, Wrexham are currently sat in fourth place in the National League. But they are up there and they are competing. So we, you never know, they may be back in the, the uh, Football League soon. Uh, Torquay... Uh, for some of you uh, that I know are actually all the way down in 13th in the National League. So I know there'll be a few, quite quite a few of you very, very disappointed people. Anyway, back to the focus. In terms of how we're doing, we are now, after those running games uh, off camera, we've moved up to 8th in the Championship. Watford still seem to be the runaway leaders. Norwich have moved up to second. Burnley, who of course we managed to beat in one of the off-camera games, have dropped are up to third. Sheffield United have dropped further to fifth at fourth. Luton are still really punching above their weight in fifth. Middlesbrough are the team in sixth. Of course, Michael Carrick's Middlesbrough. Um, and the relegation zone is formed of Wigan. Coventry have now dropped in there. 
and Swansea City still sit rock bottom of the championship as it stands. Um, just to see that if we did get into the Premier League, who's sort of in the bottom at the moment, it is Bournemouth, Everton and Wolves, so they may be the teams that come down when we don't play next season, but still early on, and we'll find out a little bit on a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, like I say, we brought in Phil Jones. There are a few sellings, uh, a few players we've sold, to tell you about we saw, sold Ryan Sturk when and joined crew Nico Gordon has joined Port Vale and Reza Gahooch Channel Jad who of course we mentioned did okay in a couple of appearances for us and then sort of faded off when he when he was coming off the bench or starting um, he has agreed to join Rochdale so those three will all be leaving us um, it's it's not players that I'm really gutted about, and as I said, try and sell our our fringe players on. Another thing is, it was mentioned at the start of the other episode when we were doing our scouting. Tyler Adams will be joining us in January. We have completed that deal, so I'm really really impressed with that one. Um, and add a little bit of squad depth, um, and sort of probably come in to replace the aging Craig Gardner on the bench. Uh, oh, I can have an extra. We can have extra subs in this game. Now, Dini. Dini will be on the bench. And I am going to give a chance, I think. So, the young lad who's been playing really really well for our under 18s I'm going to put Brendan Keller on the bench just to see how he does now we go into this we travel to the London Stadium balance of approach our players are motivated here is the lineup from David Moyes West Ham quite a strong side few rotations here is our side no real changes apart from Phil Jones coming in. Tony, of course, the player to watch. So that is really, really important. Quite a nice weather here in the Carabao Cup. Referee is Jared Gillett. Can we go get a result? You know, we are the underdogs here. And the game is underway. And Castile collects. It's forward and it's a goal almost straight away. For West Ham United, Jared Bowen simply slots home. Of course, the Carabao Cup is a trophy that Birmingham won the year they were relegated from the Premier League. Of course, it would be nice to win a trophy, but we're not looking at that this season. We're looking at trying to get promoted, trying to compete towards the top of the league at least. I mean, mid-table would be a success for Birmingham, but I think we can aim bigger. And we'll want to try and win this game, but West Ham are creating all the chances at the moment, and they are being quite dominant, which you'd expect from West Ham at home. Not really creating. Okay, so we go into half time. Now I have uh, had to give him a little bit of a bollocking at half time because we didn't really create much, we didn't really do anything. Sometimes you've got to take a gamble. I think I'm going to do something that I haven't done in any of our league games. I'm going to bring Archie Collins off. I'm going to bring Hannibal Medjbury on. That's going to be the only change I'm going to make for now. Medjbury comes on for Collins. And I am actually going to change our tactical approach a little bit. Still only 1-0, but I am going to change the approach. Wampasaka is going to become a wing-back. George Friend, wing-back. Hannibal, oh, not that. Hannibal is going to be moved on to a box-to-box -box midfielder. Let's get him powering forward. Let's get him causing that threat. I am going to bring on the experienced striker of Troy Deeney. I just think, you know, he's a, he's a ruthless pressing forward. Really would compliment 
and I'm going to give Gulam a debut actually. Because Morrison is on a yellow card and I can't risk him really. We need him if we manage to get through. So I'm going to bring Gulam on for his debut. But as for a debut starts, I would say Jones is doing okay. I think those tactical changes now, I'm a little bit more confident. Let's try and press a little bit. You know, there's still still a good chunk of the game to go. West Ham haven't created much since. Of course, neither have we, which is obviously the little bit that's really starting to worry me. Here is a chance for Walt at West Ham. They have put it wide, which is a little bit lucky for us. But we'll take that. You know, that is... I think there's no disgrace if we lose here. West Ham are a Premier League club. They are kind of doing really well. It's a corner to us. Uh, we've given away the goal kick. No real chance there. Sort of fizzled out. We are going to bring Chong on for Leko. Going to bring Gardner in for Bellingham. bring Keller on for Birmingham. I'm actually going to bring Keller on for Bellingham. I'm going to bring the young lad on actually. I think giving him a chance, get him to make his Birmingham debut. I think like that is something that's really good to see. Can we get a goal here? It's a corner to us. It's whipped in. And we've scored! Ivan Tony, that man again. I'll say it time and time again. What a signing he has been. Such a goal threat, just gives us those opportunities out of nowhere. And we've really started to attack this game now, and it's going to go to extra time. Oh, oh no, it's straight to penalties, isn't it? In the Carabao Cup. So it finishes 1 1 here at the London Stadium. Ivan Tony to step up first. It's saved. Ben Rama, oh, he saved it. Castiles, Dini has been saved. Cresswell, saved. Well, this penalty shootout. Planchetta, saved. Oh, my God. This is a penalty shootout of the goalkeepers. Oh, no, it hasn't been saved. Sorry. I'm being stupid here. They've gone in. They've gone in. Just uh, it's, it's the uh, 3D angle. We're winning 4-3 on penalties. We've done it. We have done it. We have not West Ham out of the Carabao Cup. We progress to the next round. And I can only apologise for my commentary there. I thought they'd been saved by the goalkeeper. But it turns out... Playing on FM Mobile, obviously it's not as clear. We've won 4-3 on penalties. Would we like to attend the draw? Yes, we absolutely will. Those are the possible teams then. Man United play. We will travel to Manchester United in the next round of the Carabao Cup. So a big draw for us. You know, um, probably a draw that whilst it's, it's good to get a big team in terms of the finances, I think personally I would have probably liked to have drawn a smaller team, but we'll travel away to Manchester United in the next round of the Carabao Cup. Um, which, you know, uh, I think will be interesting for us, definitely. Our next game is Sunderland. So, we've done really, really well. We've drawn Manchester United. Okay, not the greatest. But I, I, I think for us, fourth round of the Carabao Cup is further than we expected to reach. I mean, we've won in every round so far. We can only be only be delighted, um, really, with that. I think... 
if you told me where Bur where we'd uh, we'd get that far in the Carabao Cup, I would have been very very surprised. Now we'll play the second game of the episode, which will be at home to Sunderland, and then we'll probably return. I imagine for that Carabao Cup fourth round game for Manchester United in episode four. Let's get on with the game. Roberts has returned to training. As I mentioned, he got injured. Uh, it was out for, for several weeks. Let's have a little look what we've got in our Maxime Lopez. So I swear, though. Is he worth signing? Because he's a good key player. <coughs> Again, a more defensive midfielder. Let's see if they accept that. Oh, they want 53 million. Hmm. How about 50? Let's hold on. Well, we're going to be paying a lot if we do sign Lopez. Defensive midfielder. I think our scout's done quite well there, actually. I mean, that's quite an... I think he would be a good signing for us. I do think he'd improve us again. Gives us another little option. Does that shift Archie Collins out of the team? Probably. But I think... Give him 140 grand a week. Sign on fee of 2 million. Now I know I'm spending a lot of money here. You know, I think I'm taking a little, little bit taking advantage of the Taiku money. Anyway, it is the Sunderland game, so we will now be playing Sunderland. I will name an unchanged lineup. Oh, Gul oh Gulami on the bench is injured. Gulami, I forgot he was even on our bench, to be honest. But Longello has recovered from his injury. So we will continue pretty much the same side. The only change is Longello back on the bench. Let's demand more from our players. Most of them seem motivated by that. I think for us it's it's, it's just about, there's your lineup. There's the conf confirmation. Uh, here's Tony Brobray's Sunderland lineup. I think for us, the aim here has to be three points. You know, we really want to climb the table, of course. Fairly good conditions here in the championship. Matthew Donahue, he's a firm referee. I mean, we really want to improve our, our, our run of form in the championship. I think we want to be pushing towards the top of the league in, in reality. I mean, mid-table would have been a good, um, good result for us at the start of the season, I think. Um, if you, before the tycoon takeover, but now I think we've definitely, with a couple of the signings we've made, we've definitely got to push up towards the top. Uh, we've just given away a free kick there on the edge of the box, and I think he's just sent him off there. Oh no, that was half time. Uh, I do apologise. He hasn't uh, hasn't sent him off. That was the half time whistle. I got very confused with the way he uh, delayed that free kick there. We go back in the second half. It is Sirkin for Sunderland. No real opportunity for either team yet. So. We are going to make some tactical changes. We're going to do what we've done in the last couple. We're going to put Friend and Wem Sacker as wing backs. Leco is going to be a winger. As is Planchetta. They're going to, you know, we're going to push them up a little bit. We're going to try playing Job Bellingham as a box to box midfielder. I think Jukovic has done well enough to stay on. We're not going to make any changes. We're going to make some tactical changes. 
wan has been the best defensive player on the pitch. I think now, 75th minute, we're going to make a change. I'm going to bring on Hannibal again. And I'm going to bring on Hogan for Jukovic. And we're going to make Hogan a poacher. Let's make those changes. Let's see if we can have an impact on this game because we want to want to win the game. No real highlights, so we're going to do something here. We're going to start overloading them. We're going to go. We're going to throw everything at this game uh, here. Let's throw everything at them to try and get a goal here. I'm going to change the tactics again. We're going to start going long. Goalkeeper's going to go long. We're going to shoot on sight. We're going to go long. We're going to mix. We're going to go long. Tactical changes. We're going to go more direct. Could this create a chance? No, it's over the bar. And it's a draw here. Not a result we wanted. Not a result at all. But a nil-nil draw. I mean, it's not a, not a disgrace. But a, a nil nil draw at home against Sunderland, a team that's only just come into the division, a little bit disappointing. But I think uh, Sunderland will definitely be the happy, happier team going away from that game. They have more possession. Yes, we have more shots and more shots on target and chances created. But I don't think we did enough of that to warrant um, warrant celebrating anything. I think. Some of them were definitely the better side in that game. You know, a little bit more of a boring way to end the episode. But let's have a little look at the league table. Let's have a look at how we're doing. Because I think, for us at the moment, it is just purely trying to get results. Our next game, of course, is in a month's time against Blackpool. Obviously, due to the World Cup, we now have a month's break. Uh fixtures we will come back for so we will come back for the Manchester United game uh, that will be the game we come back for on the next episode let's have a little look at let's have a look at the league table so we're in ninth place we we we're still in the top half of the table, which is promising. Still only two points off the playoffs. So let's really, really hope we can break into that. I think we definitely can. I think we've shown quality at times. I think bringing in Tony is, will do that, has done that. You know, his goals have sort of propelled us from being down towards the bottom. Um, Collins and Bellingham have been solid. You know, since we've started playing Planchetta, we've started creating more chances, but... We just haven't really been been doing quite enough yet to push towards the top two. I think the aim this season definitely has to be trying to get into that playoffs. At the very, very minimum is staying in this top half. But I think my aim is definitely to get into those playoffs at the very least. Um, and, and, you know, I still believe that we could, you know, we're only 10 points off second. I believe there is an opportunity over the coming months that we could potentially be in a position to get the second, but we've got to start picking up points against teams that aren't as good as us. So as you can see, um, you know, it may be a little bit of a tall ass, but we're halfway through the season. I'm fairly happy. I think we've done pretty well. Um, done better than Birmingham were predicted when I came in. So, of course, the tycoon takeover and the money we're spending probably helps that. But, yeah, I think it's... As you can see there, there is the league table for you. So, yeah, I think I think it's a really positive way to end the episode. I think for us, um, 
being in the top half is is a very promising thing. Um, and the last couple of things from me is please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, always very very interesting to know if you're enjoying the series. Um, of something a little bit new for me, playing football manager mobile and sort of doing some content. Very very new for me. So I do appreciate all your likes, all your comments. Uh, and those of you that have subscribed already, you know, it really, really does mean a lot. And it really does mean that I can I can grow the channel. Um, so that is the end of the episode for today. Really, really promising. Like I said, we'll be back in the next episode for the Manchester United Carabao Cup fourth round tie. Um, uh, yeah, so really, really uh, pleased with today. I think... Um, like I said, please comment, like, share and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.